Okay, hello YouTube. It has been a long time, but I am back and ready to make more Unreal Engine 4 tutorials. Uh, apologies for the people that subscribe to the channel and the content just kind of stopped. Uh, college has had to take uh, uh, the forefront of my life at the minute, the front seat, and be my priority. But at the minute now I can kind of step back, that's all finished off early. And we're going to come with another tutorial. Today we're going to look at something that can be applied to many different things and isn't specific to one thing. We're going to take a look at communicating between blueprints. So what I've got here is I have two blueprints, a wall lamp and a light switch. And they're totally separate, but turning the light switch will do something to the wall lamp and it'll call an event. So the event here is a custom event, changes light color, it sets the color, then we just make a random color there. And in the light switch we have some enable disable inputs and we communicate between the two. Now this bit is what we're going to actually be looking at, how we actually set this up to communicate between the two. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build this from the start. But I'll quickly play it and just show you what we're working with here. So when I press E, when I'm inside the light switch, it generates a new color for the lamp. And as you can see, each one is different because it's communicating them differently. They're generating different random numbers. Uh, and that's creating the light that you can see that are different light colors. So, without further ado, let's uh, delete these from the world. Uh, all of them. And let's delete the blueprints. Um, and let's go ahead and try and build that from the start again. So the first thing we want to do is build the light switch, which is going to be our first blueprint. I'm going to drag in a simple cube. That's going to be my light switch. Let's just make it a little bit more light switch shaped, a bit smaller. I'll just hide the rest of that in the wall. So that's going to be our light switch, but we need to convert that to a blueprint. So we'll do that there. And that's going to become light switch BP. And just create the blueprint. Um, just check something on here. Okay. Uh, so that's our blueprint there. I'm going to edit the blueprint now, and we're going to add we we'll actually bring this off. I've I sold my other monitor, so I'm working on one monitor at the minute, so it's getting a bit cramped for me. Uh, I've got three monitors on the way though, so I'll be able to spread things back out and have a. Yeah, never mind. Not really relevant. So let's come in here to the component. This is on the light switch blueprint now. We're going to add a component to this. We're going to find uh, the collision box collision, and we're going to stretch that out so it's more suitable for us. So let's make that taller, a bit wider. And if we compile it, we can have a look in there and see that, yeah, let's make it a bit wider. And then we can actually see in real time here the size of the thing. So that all looks about right for our light switch. We could even, you know, extend it out a bit more. There we go. Okay, so that's what we need to do for that. Um, and before we set up the event graph in here, we are going to build the second blueprint. So what I'm going to do is go on down to starter content, props, and let's drag out a lamp, nice little lamp, uh, rotate that 180 degrees and then we can convert this into a blueprint now and this is going to be called light BP. Create the blueprint, add a component and we need, we need the component that we're going to change so I'm going to go with a point light and I'm just going to drag it up so it's inside the cone, drag it out the wall a bit. Uh, do you know what, just for the sake of making it visible I'll make it a bit higher up there. And then we can compile that, and now we need to work inside this event graph. So what we're first of all going to do is set up a custom event. Now, bearing in mind that this tutorial is, is talking about things that can be adapted to anything. So if you have any custom event, or I suppose for that minute, any, well, yeah, sticking to custom events, I'm not too sure about the built-in events, but sticking to any custom event, if you have any custom event in any class, you can call it from any other class with the way I'm going to show you. So we're going to call this change light color. And we're going to call off that color and we're going to select the light color to the new light color. We're going to make a color and quickly we'll just go random float. That's not how you spell float or that. So you want a floating range from 0 to 1 because R, G and B can only be between 0 and 1. So we'll have a float between 0 and 1. Squash our light into there. Alpha, we're going to leave it hunt one so that the uh, light is constantly on. And that is the custom event. Now, there's nothing actually calling this, which is where we're going to communicate with it from a different blueprint here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go with the uh, event actor begin overlap. And we also need an end overlap. Now, if you've seen any of my other tutorials, you'll know about how we enable and disable input on something. So when we end the overlap... We want to disable input. So when he leaves that collision cube that we set up earlier, we want him to no longer be able to press E and interact with the object. So we disable the input when he leaves, and when he enters, we cast to 
And in this, the first person character is called first person character, so you're going to cast to that. And then um, you're going to, so when the first person character enters, we're going to enable input. And we also need to get player controller and link that up there. So that's the basic input output setup so that we can interact with the object when we're in range of it. Now we need the key that we want to interact with it. So let's go with, um, let's use the F key. So when we press F, we want to do something. So now this is this is the bit that the entire tutorial is about. This is how we communicate between the blueprints. So you're going to go over and add a new variable. What? Yep, okay. Variables in Unreal are not just booleans and integers and vectors and whatnot. They're also references. So you're going to come down here to object reference. And now, so what did we call the other blueprint? It was light something. So let's go and find L. L. Light BP. That's what we called it, right? So you set that to light BP. We give it a name. So we're going to call this light blueprint one and I'll, I'll name it I'm naming it one for a reason we need to make this a public variable make sure you take that little thing there so it becomes an i compile it get it and then if you do the, watch this magic change change light color now there is the event that we set up earlier and we can actually call it from within this blueprint now when we press the f key magic yeah i know now there's one more thing you have to do so if you come on back out to the map bit now and select the light switch you'll see in here under default it now has a little section called light blueprint one and we can select the lights within the world so let's move this over here let's let's duplicate this so we've got a couple of lights going on light bp two three and four and blank so go back on over to the light switch we can select any of those that are actually in the world now so let's say i want to change two okay now hopefully this is the bit of the tutorials where i kind of dread it and hope that everything works right and if i go over here and press the f key you can see that number two changes color and I'm actually only interacting with this. Remember that this has no interaction with it whatsoever. It's purely from this blueprint here. So now I'm going to quickly show you how we cast to multiple uh, blueprints at once and that's where the one came in. So similarly you're going to duplicate this reference. Uh, we're going to name this one two and we'll duplicate it again. Three and we'll duplicate it. Oops. We'll duplicate it one more time and name that four. And basically all we're going to do is get this and get this again and get this again and for each one i'm going to call change light color and just link it up one after the other and because they're all separate blueprints they that each light color will be different uh, so change light color and change light color oops that's taking me to the light blueprint hook that up compile it and when we jump back into the game, we can actually that won't work because we didn't set them up out here. So we have BP2 there, we'll have BP3, BP4, and BP0. And then hit play. Run on over here. And nothing happens because I'm pressing E. So if I press F, it's disco time. So there you go. That's how you communicate between blueprints, and that's also how you make a color in case you're interested in how to make a random color on your lights. Um, also how to enable and disable input if you didn't know that either. So there's a couple of things you covered there, but most importantly it's the communicating between blueprints. Now this can be used for almost anything. Let's say you have a character, he has a custom event on him that when he touches something, it, uh, he takes 10 damage. Or uh, it makes him scream or something. So you have a custom event that calls the scream sound. And then basically you set up another blueprint and when the actor enters it, you tell it to cast to the... Uh, to the so the character blueprint and then it calls that custom function that you made the custom event um, Bob's your uncle and it calls it just like that so each time we press F it's calling new lights there now I know this is a pretty simple tutorial but it, it the uh, it does have X you, you know you can use this in almost any aspect of communicating between blueprints and communicating is a huge part of coding you have to especially object oriented programming your classes do need to be able to communicate with each other, and this is a fantastic way of doing it. So I hope this has helped. Um, do do make sure you subscribe. Uh, people that have recently subscribed, thank you very much. Uh, you will be seeing more content from me coming up. I do have a lot more free time now, and I'm actually... I mean, if you were following my sneak development, that kind of got put on hold. Uh, and I mean, I don't know, maybe I'll make another game. Maybe I'll take a look at doing some other programs, you know, some, some uh, 3D modeling and bring it into Unreal and building. I might do a, a full game building series. Anyway... Stay tuned for all that kind of good stuff, and uh, until then, enjoy the discos.
Uh, take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.